Uh, hey guys, Steven here, and after a uh, brief video break, I am back. Today we are going to be taking a very, very quick and basic look at transistors. Uh, this is because of a uh, request I got, and I thought it would be a good thing for me to do, considering I have a college degree about this very subject. So let's take a look, shall we? First of all, um, we're going to talk about what the heck a transistor is and, and why we care. And uh, so basically, this is a picture of one right here. This is a uh, this is an N-type uh, MOSFET transistor. You can see it's basically it looks like a big black square. That's because it has lots of complicated stuff inside that we're going to briefly touch on, but we don't care too much about. We're going to care about how it works, really. And uh, you see it has these three uh, terminals at the bottom. Uh, the one on the far left here is called the emitter. The one in the middle is called the base. And the one on the end is called uh, the collector. Now, this, you can see right here, is kind of a circuitry representation of a transistor. If you see one of, this, one of these, that uh, means you're looking at a transistor in a diagram. Another way these are drawn is like uh, so. And then you'll see an arrow either going into uh, the transistor or out from it in some way like that. And uh, so here's your collector, your base, and your emitter. Now the way these are hooked up is pretty simple. Um, or I'll talk about what they, what, why you would hook it up a certain way. Basically, uh, we want our transistor to help us make cool electronic things that we can't make uh, mechanically, okay? Or we can make mechanically, but they're too slow. And so a transistor is cool because it's basically a switch, but it doesn't have any moving parts. So you know in uh, previous circuit drawings you might have seen, you'd see a switch like this, where you have some kind of thing going on here, like maybe this is powering a little uh, light bulb, a wiener-shaped light bulb maybe, there, or a mushroom-shaped one, okay. And so when we close the switch down to here, we'd get uh, light from our light bulb, and that's assuming we have some kind of uh, battery out here. So the transistor does this same function, but it doesn't have the mechanical switching action. What you do to um, power or to get a transistor to switch is you apply power to the base uh, node which is this one here in the diagram, or this one here on the actual physical device, okay? So you can view your other two uh, terminals as your, your collector is where you power it, so it's collecting power, and your emitter is where you connect it to something else, okay? So it's, um, you know, it would be emitting uh, power through there. And uh, I, say, I say power, but we're really concerned with uh, voltages and, and currents. With transistors. So the transistor is a little switch. And the cool thing about that is little switches can be either on or little switches can be off. And if you f recognize these two states, maybe you'll recognize them more if I give each one a number designation. That's right, transistors let us work with binary logic in circuitry. Okay. So we could take a whole bunch of these things and hook them up in different ways. And that's what I want to show you how to do is how can we take a transistor and build logic gates out of it? So with logic gates, you'll remember um, the simplest one is always uh, the inverter, which looks like this. And it turns out inverters are just made of one transistor. So we can, as you know, we can make all other logic gates just from uh, inverters and some other kind. So inverters are going to be very useful to us. It turns out the second most simple logic gate to make with transistors is the NAND gate. And if you don't remember what that does, uh, the NAND gate is only uh, powered if both of the inputs are, or sorry, as long as both of the inputs are not on. Okay. So it's the opposite of AND, basically. So let's take a look at how and why we can turn a transistor into an inverter. Okay, so say we have our little circuit here. This is our transistor, and we have all of our terminals. So say we, um, this is commonly done, we put in a little resistor at the top, and we attach a battery of some kind. Let's make it five volts. 
then the bottom we are just going to ground, okay? So this is our input right here. We're gonna take our output from the top, okay? This is what we commonly do. So this will be our output. This is our input. And let's kind of take a look at what's going on in this when it's in either a powered state or an unpowered state. So right now, our input is zero. Okay, so if it's, if it's zero, we're not applying any power to the gate or the base, as it's called. It, you call it base or gate. And um, so right now, basically, the there is no connection between the top of the transistor and the bottom. Okay, that's kind of what the base does. When you apply the voltage, you can imagine this little bit going in and uh, connecting the top and the bottom, almost like a switch, except this is happening on a, a level of like electrons. It's not anything that you could physically see click like a real switch, okay? So if these are not connected, then all of our output voltage, instead of coming uh, down through our uh, transistor, it's just all the, the current is gonna go straight out like this. So we're gonna have a voltage across this area of whatever our output is, okay? So if we, you can see that if we don't power the transistor, our output is going to be one. I mean, one being some number greater than zero volts, okay? Whereas, if we say, let's go ahead and uh, power the transistor, and it wouldn't look much different to you in person if you applied power to one, and that's because all these things are happening on microscopic levels. So let's, we give it a voltage of some kind, let's say plus five, that's a pretty common one. So now you can imagine this as being connected. So your current is gonna go straight from the top to the bottom. And these, you can imagine this point and this point to be essentially connected, okay? And you know that at the ground, you always have zero volts. So up here, you're gonna have about zero volts, okay? So that effectively gives us a binary output of zero and also a voltage output of zero. So you can see it's inverted once again. We give it a one and we get a zero out, okay? So we've built our inverter gate. Basically what we can do is we call this our input, and if we draw a little triangle around this, you can kind of see where our, uh, our gate comes from, okay? All logic gates you do need to uh, give some kind of power to and some kind of ground to for the most part. So you can see how we get uh, this, this design from this, okay? So in order to make all of our other logic gates, we're going to need something uh, maybe more complicated. And what's frequently done in the industry is we use uh, NAND gates. So I'm going to show you how we build a NAND gate from only transistors. Okay, so let's start off with the same thing we had before. We have one transistor, and we'll give it a plus five volts through the top of a, a resistor, okay? And here is our base and our output. So instead of grounding our output, let's take our output and feed it into another transistor, and we'll ground this one. So you can see we add a second input. We'll call them A and B. B. And let's take our output of the whole um, transistor setup from the top. So this shows us the voltage across the entire thing. Okay, that's why we take it from the top. Uh, so this will be our output. Okay, and I'm just going to try to erase my, my curly brace. So we have four possible uh, combinations with this setup. If uh, we could either have both of the transistors getting power, or, or one getting power, one or the other, or none of them getting power. And you can see this is going to give us our NAND logic. So let's make a truth table and, uh, and see why we get what we do. So we could have both off, one on, the other on, or both on. So right now, let's assume they're both off. We'll give them uh, 
zero being applied. So that means that um, this point is not connected to this point, and that means that it's also not connected to our bottom point. So all of our voltage is going to come, or all of our current is going to come from the top. The voltage is uh, the the total voltage drop is the sum of this one and this one. So that's going to be greater than zero in this case. So we're going to have our binary output of one if they're both off. And let me erase these. So if we power um, just the one, I'm not going to do it twice. I'll just show you. If we power the B, if we power the B with some kind of voltage, then you can see that uh, it doesn't matter. So these will effectively be tied together because the gate is closed so everything can flow through here rather nicely but the top is still not connected here so our current is still all going to go through our output we will still uh, have hmm. yes we will still have our non-zero output so again we get a one for that uh, we would do the same thing if we swapped them, if we got zero here and one here. And then let's look at the case where they're both on. Like so. So we have uh, our five volts coming from the top. Then these points will essentially be connected so everything can flow straight through here. These points are essentially connected so everything can flow straight through here down to the ground so our output is going to be the same as ground and that means our output will be zero so you can see if we have both on we get zero now this is what we call a NAND gate uh, NAD <laughs> NAND gate okay and the interesting thing about NAND gates is we can use them to make any other gate that we want to and just to prove that to you I will show you really quick um, let's just look at a couple of them. We can take a NAND gate if we want to and make an inverter so that if we just want to produce one item and we only want to buy one item for our computers uh, to make an inverter, we would just take uh, two NAND gates like so. We would, um, oh, sorry, just one NAND gate, my mistake. We would take, uh, oh yeah, let's draw. This is what the thing looks like when you close it off. this we give it our little dot at the front and the output wire kind of comes through there so we have a b power ground and output so if we take um if we want to create this we would just take one input give it into both of the uh input terminals kind of connect them together and one output so there's our inversion if you want to make an and gate you take uh a nand gate you give it your a and your b a, B. And so here we have A NAND B, and then all we have to do is invert this. And then we get A and B. So you can do this for all the other gates. I uh, won't bother going through all of them, but it's pretty simple. You can look it up on the internet if you are curious. And so yeah, this is uh, transistors, what they do. Remember, it's just, it's a little tiny switch. They're super cheap to produce. And there are several hundred million of them in, in common processors, and uh, we're getting better and better at making them. Uh, and we're getting better at making them smaller and cheaper. But eventually we can't make them any smaller, because when you're working with individual electrons, at a certain point you can't go any smaller, can you? So we're going to have to come up with some new way... Uh, to make a switch, and people are thinking that's going to be our quantum computing, quantum computing, where we look at individual electrons as uh, as switches. Kind of, we can spin them one way or another, and uh, in, in that way we can signify our on or off state. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I'm admittedly a bit out of practice when it comes to teaching. So uh, let me know if there's any other topics you want me to explore, and if you want me to go more in-depth in transistors, I would be happy to do so. Thank you, and goodbye.